Guys, we have got some crab candy for the blue crab today. And this is just a reminder what we're going to be looking for. This is the South Carolina DNR regulations for South Carolina, which is where we are. The blue crab legal minimum size limit is five inches. We're just recreational crabbers spreading our knowledge or um, unknowledge. Guys, when you're crabbing, don't ever worry about the color of the traps or anything that you're using. Crab or colorblind. With the fluctuation of our tides here in South Carolina, you never want to set these traps that they're exposed on low tide. Anytime that you want to hit the like button, just, you know, go down there and see the little thumbs up. Make sure you hold it till it turns dark color. And then that thumbs down button, it's a trick to that when you hit it two times. That way the YouTube creator knows that you really didn't like their video. Testing the waters with you guys. It's handy. Look at Oh, I see a few. Yeah, buddy. Man, lots of crabs. This is one of the biggest crabs that I have caught in this area in four to five years of crab. Oh, ho, 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 ho. we have figured something out, guys. Shh. Don't tell nobody. Shake, shake, shake. Shake them crabbies. Guys, we have got some crab candy for the blue crab today. I'm talking about we got some carcasses and stuff that where we've been catching fish right here in Beaufort, South Carolina. And we're about to bait up four crab traps and take them out in the uh, river right out here. Pretty good sized river in our area and in hopes of catching some blue crabs with you guys. Here's some of the, the bait. Anybody know what that head right there would have went on? How about that? Black drum. So we got a good variety of bait for the crabs. And we all know that crabs love stinky stuff. So we got some good stinky bait. It's really not that bad, guys. It's really more fresh than what it seems. We just, uh, when we're cleaning our fish, we don't actually let the bait start to go bad, like get old. It goes straight into a freezer. So it's about like us eating meat from, you know, a grocery store or out of our own freezer. Yeah, it's definitely not rotten bait. And this is just a reminder what we're going to be looking for. This is the South Carolina DNR regulations for South Carolina, which is where we are. The blue crab legal minimum size limit is five inches and you're measuring from point to point on the back of their shell. So that's just a good indication of what we're going to be after. But we got to get the traps baited up and set out in the river first before we worry about catching any. That's right. And one thing we're going to be doing, we, we're using these uh, four crab traps. That's two for me and two for Stephanie with our recreational fishing license. Uh, we're going to get them baited up and get another uh, yellow buoy like you see over here on these traps because here in South Carolina we need those uh, yellow buoys with our name and address on them to identify us as being the owners of these recreational crabbing traps. That's right. And you'll see that these traps, these are the four cubic foot. They have two levels. One level here and another level here. These traps are upside down right at the moment because that's where the bait compartment is, is on the bottom. So um, that way as the crabs enter into the little entrances there's four on each side as they enter in usually a lot of crabs will swim upward so they'll go through this little v here and end up into the top of the trap and like i said this trap is upside down so don't let that confuse you but when they end up in the top of the trap you'll see that keeps them away from the bait compartment so that way the bait lasts longer while you're crabbing yeah and uh, going back to the trap being upside down when the trap is in the best position to catch crabs this rebar right here is going to be down on the bottom. That puts your entrances, which are these guys right here, closer to the bottom where the crabs can crawl right in. And I like to keep mine 
about you know big enough for my hand size to go through the entrance and be snug coming back out yeah that way the crabs don't really have a um ability to come back out they could if they you know find the right hole to come back out of but a lot of times like i said they'll end up in the top of the trap and that's what they're supposed to do they're supposed to be trapped right and these crab traps you know usually in our area when you buy a new one it'll only last you about four or five years you'll have to do repairs to them along the way maybe with some zip ties or just pieces of wire and stuff and it'll be about time to you know renew uh, your traps which a trap like this nowadays already with the rebar and the boys and the rope and everything is they're going 85 to 100 dollars a piece so but it's something fun to get out on the coastal waters of our area here in south carolina you know to get out and do something different catch your own um supper and that's what we love doing that's right this trap right here we're going to stack them right on the front of our little john boat And we just got a new pot, thanks to our buddy, um, yeah. Philip McFerrin and Shelly yeah. McFerrin for yeah. donating a pot to Salty Reflections. Oh, they had they one they didn't use. Yet, <laughs> <laughs> they had one they didn't use and they had told Oliver he could get it. So he took them up on it today. Well, we had some that had gotten too bad. He may not have given it to me, but I don't, I'm, I'm thinking that he won't mind me using it, right? That's the way we all. So he put a black drum carcass and a whole little whiting in that one. Plenty of bait. And we never know how much bait we're going to actually need. It is getting cool here in our area right now. The temperature is like today around 55, 57 degrees. Ooh. Our water temperature is down in the low 60s maybe in the high 50s now i'm not too sure i really hadn't checked it but i know we're getting close to that so our goal is to see if, if we can catch some blue crabs to share with you guys see if they're out in our area two big black, black carcasses in that one And it was almost perfect amount of bait there, guys. We're going to take a couple pieces, maybe out of one or two, and spread them out. And we're good to go. So we had some whiting and some pinfish and old bait carcasses. Well, so we try not to waste anything. If we can help it, whenever we catch fish, we like to use as much of it as possible. So we eat the fish that we catch when they're legal size keepers or when we're within our limits and um of course you always need to check the regulations for your cell phone fish because they change the regulations at a moment's notice everything's on the dnr website so if you are going fishing you need to make sure you are keeping up with what you can and can't keep and you know like i said we try to use everything we can so after we fillet the the fish off that we're going to eat we keep the carcasses in our bait freezer to use specifically for crabbing or if we catch little fish that we're not going to eat say like pinfish or whiting sometimes we do eat whiting as well but say if we only eat if we only catch one we might put it in like the bait freezer just to be able to use for crabbing and generally like our area down here during the warmer months the algae is real thick in the water making it hard to see and the sediment is stirred up but look right here now guys we're in two to two and a half foot of water and you can see right straight down to the bottom good visibility for some guys out there that might be uh looking to do some uh, gigging too that's right i've been hearing about some guys doing pretty good uh gigging for flounder around here right now This is our little crab boat that we share in our videos with others. It's just a little 14 foot little Sundance skiff powered by a 25 horse Yamaha. And it's a great little boat to have right here to be able to pull it on and off of this floater. 
that floater has really come in handy for us with this boat. Um, we did at one time have where we didn't have a boat here and it would build up with officers on the bottom. So this floater has definitely helped. There's some great floaters out here now that can be purchased. Yeah, this floater definitely helps keep the oysters and the barnacles clean off the bottom of the boat. You see it still gets that discoloration on it from our waters. That can be cleaned off. Of course, we're going to keep using it right in the same area. So we clean it occasionally. But we don't have to scrape the barnacles anymore, like Oliver was saying, because being up here and keeping it dry and out of the water um, while it sits here waiting on us for its next use, it doesn't build up those barnacles. You ever had a hard time putting your buoys or getting your knots right on your trap guys this is a little method that I like to use I take and double my line back about two foot there creating a loop and then just make one big loop back through itself and you want this loop right here to be big enough that when you stick the trap or the buoy through it and that's determining your hole size you can see this one's good you want it that loop big enough that you can kind of wrap it back through itself like this come up through it then over and around and they kind of cinch up on itself it's just an easy way that i found to keep the trap or the buoys on might not be the best way so i'm gonna just tie another loop right here just to knot it on off guys <laughs> sometimes you just got to figure out the best way as you go the loop looked like it could have slipped back off of the buoy like that but i'm always trying to make sure things is over dead anyhow so there we go philip this is my buoy How about this little thing right here? And this trap right here was made, I noticed a while ago. With this part right here, it was so spread out from here to here that when you're actually pulling this down, look at this gap. Which ain't that bad right now, but it could easily get opened up. So I just come up through the top right here so that when it's pulling, it's still connected out here, but it's pulling more dead center to keep that thing kind of locked down better. See the gap closure of it. And this, and this, this little trap you watch out for with crab. This trap does have some coal rings, and what that is is um, these little rings right here that will let the smaller crabs out. Um, you know what? It's, it's only about two inches wide or so, so it, it'll let those crabs out that are real small so that way you won't have to cull as many out so it's called a coal ring That's i think right. the commercial guys in this area have to run traps with coal rings i believe um that could be incorrect like i said we're just recreational crabbers spreading our knowledge or um unknowledge of of things in our area so that's right so right now very important part of boating make sure the plugs are in yeah, with the little sun dance, you got two plugs in the back. To, it's a self bailing little boat as you're running along and you ever got water in it, you can take one of those plugs out and drain the water. All right, let's get set up and ready to get out of here. Got us untied. <coughs> Y'all have to exclude, excuse us sniffling. I hear me and Oliver both sniffling, but it is kind of cold and windy out here. So um, it's not really our type of weather, but it is what it is. We got to go when we get the chance. When we don't have extra weight on this boat, this little 25, uh, this skiff on this floater, it will actually, if you put it in reverse and rev it up pretty hard, it will pull this boat off, but 
we normally when we're loaded with crab pots and stuff just kind of scoot it back into position there you go step come on in so we just get it slid about halfway back so we can head on out guys And today we're going to be setting the crab pots out and then just returning back home because that's what we have time for this afternoon. So we do what we can as we can. And you can tell by looking around, guys, look at the reeds, how the wind is blowing them right now. We're actually, we're using some coverage on our camera to reduce the wind noise for you guys, but the wind's actually 10 to 15 miles per hour out here right now. And you can see those reeds laid over. Guys, when you're crabbing, don't ever worry about the color of the traps or anything that you're using crab or colorblind it's not going to make any difference to what color so that's like when you see in this lime green trap versus these black traps don't ever let that be the determination you know as far as catching the crabs now you got a preference of your own if you see a trap that you like is the colors you like but besides that don't worry about it Although we do hear some superstitions, some, some crabbers are very superstitious and only want certain color crab pots. This is just a coating that's over the wire, trying to protect it a little bit while it's in the salt water. Cause you see once that wire gets exposed, it starts to rust. And you do see there's some pretty heavy um, rebar on the bottom of these traps just to keep them in the same position once we put them out into the waters. The, the current here is pretty strong and the tide fluctuation goes up and down quite a bit so that heavy rebar on the bottom of those traps just ensures that they're not going to float away or move exactly. around in the in the current a lot of times in this area you know i've heard story of guys you know they put the traps out and they go back to check them and the traps are not there well number one you can have line your line on your crab traps if it's too short and the tide comes in the buoy makes the trap buoyant Number two, you may just not have enough weight for the trap to stay on the bottom and it'll just drag. So either way, the worst case scenario is having a rope that's too short and creating that buoyancy because it's not really going to ever stop until it gets to a shallow water and then guys think that somebody else has moved their trap. You know, we just have it up here and I hear sometimes that these things are going on because of ignorance and from what I've learned ignorance ain't no excuse right yep and we're headed out into the bigger river because with the temperatures like Oliver was saying the water temperature is kind of cold right now which means the crabs have been drawn out into the deeper water so out of the marsh areas that we find them in whenever it's really warm um they're out in the deeper water right now so that's where we're headed right oliver yeah out in the deeper water guys you know and the thing about the crabs this time of year if we do find them they usually we usually around november december start seeing some really big crabs in our area i guess they've just grown up throughout the year and uh, so at the end of the year like this you can see some nice crabs in our area really nice some even will go what i'm calling nice in our area a really nice crab here is over six inches a five could be a number one and go up from there but a six inch crab here and bigger in south carolina is a nice crab i know up in maryland and different areas like that i've heard of stories where you guys actually catch crab that are eight and nine inches that's that's awesome that's some big crab and i'm sure there's plenty of big lump meat and stuff to pick out of those crabs to make all those good recipes right 
Oh, we got yeah. a little white cap out here coming across the bigger river. Yeah, I see that. That white cap's coming from how windy it is today. You got the water rolling. And with this little skiff, we're just easing along. Take your time when you're out on the water. You know, don't get too carried away and get yourself in a bad situation. Just take your time sometimes. Slow down and enjoy it. Yeah, we don't want to be wet. It's too cold for that. And hopefully the crab are out here pretty good. I see a good number of crab pots out in the creek um, from the commercial guys. So hopefully that means they're catching some crab in this area. Well, another thing that you want to do when you come out here crabbing guys is always be weary or looking for those commercial crabbers pots. They are out here trying to make a living for their family. And you know, nobody wants to be intruded by others out crabbing. There's still some spots that you can find. You just have to get out and look around and be kind of cautious of those guys. And for the commercial crab crabbers out there, you know, the, we're sharing the videos of the crabbing. Can you guys share a little knowledge? Like if you're a commercial crabber, what do you think is a good distance for someone to stay away from your traps to not cause any issues with you? Because I've seen a lot of you when you are crabbing, commercial guys, they have the crab pot pullers on the side of the boat. And when they're pulling it, it's a good idea for them to put the boat in idle at a spin to the same direction that they're pulling the trap, the same side. And so, you know, if you're within that zone of them spinning around making that pull, it could slow them down out on the water. And, you know, they're out here pulling maybe a hundred or more traps. They're trying to get their job done, get those crabs sorted and provide for, you know, the people that visit our area and other areas, these beautiful blue crabs here in South Carolina. We're just out here recreational crabbing, just like you know, any of you can do with a South Carolina uh, fishing license like we have, unless you're out of state. I mean, you have to check these rules and regulations for yourself when you visit our area. Or if you're living here, you still need to check them. So, right here in this area, guys, between this marsh and this area over here, I like the crab right here, right out in the dead center right there. There is a oyster mound and there's some uh, channel that cuts in behind it on low tide and I don't know why we always do good here in Lowood. Let's get one out here stuff. I don't care which one you want to do. You got them sorted out up there. This little boat we can get tangled up in the floor so she's just making sure that she can throw it out there and let go of that trap as soon as possible. Ready? Yep. Number one. Number one, crab pot number one. We're crabbing. We're crabbing. We're crabbing. We got three more pots to sit out. I'm noticing um, the commercial crabbers, they've got their pot set out in the deeper channel of the river, which actually goes out along the outside edge of this curve in this river. Oh man, one of our favorite things to see we're coming up on is some dolphin. Bottlenose dolphin, they're swimming right down here in front of us, this dock.
buoys out right down through here. It kind of goes back to what I was saying about the weight and stuff on the trap. You can see these two pots right here. They're, they're within 20 to 30 yards of each other. And I'm sure that when they were originally set out, the crabbers wouldn't have been crabbing that close together. But I don't know. It seems like maybe one of them have drifted. The next set down looks about the same distance apart, so well, they may have done it on like purpose. This area right here on the bottom, there could be a little ridge right there that's holding them in that spot right there. And then we get on down the river, we're seeing some more really close together. Is that intentional? Yeah, I would think maybe it is intentional since these two right here are set that same way. Maybe they're fishing on each side of the ridge. never know what other people will have intentions of we're just speculating we were thinking because of this two different crabbers um crabbers are assigned a color and a number and we can see that this these this crab pot's white and red or the crab pot buoy is white and red whereas this one on this side is white and orange um so we know they are two different crabbers so and they're not right on top of each other they're a little ways away but they're they're fairly close but the crab pots are lined up through here pretty good, so I guess they're just just trying to catch as many in this area as they can. This this little river through here, it's almost lined up so much with crab pots that you definitely can't get in the deeper area without being right on top of another pot. Right. The only option that you would have as a recreational crabber, I guess, it would be crab closer to the bank line and you may be still in truth by doing that. I'm not sure. You guys got to let us know out here. If you feel like we're in truth, well, we definitely don't want to do that to anyone, right? No. Nope. It's gorgeous out here today, though, while we're riding around looking for spots to put ours. make sure of while we're out here and we're looking for these spots is to keep in mind the depth of those areas now we're pretty familiar with this area we out here through the tide cycles all the time but you know it would be great to have a boat with a depth finder because with the fluctuation of our tides here in south carolina you never want to set these traps that they're exposed on low tide they need to be you know still in the water the crabs can die out, you know out of the water like that especially in the summertime with our hot temperatures and the further back you go this way the water does get shallower and shallower so i guess that's why you only see the commercial i see one last commercial pot in front of us but most of the commercial pots have been set back that way where the water's deeper in this channel. Because as we're headed towards this direction right here, a lot of this does dry up most of the way during low tide to where it's very, very shallow. So we're still looking for a place to put our pots. Still looking for a place to put our pots on this beautiful day with you guys.
good time right now. We're going to take you right over here while we're looking for a crab pot, a uh, place to put our crab pots. We're going to show you one of the nests that are built, or the perches that are built for osprey to build nests on in our area. And basically, is a pilot that's drove down and a little platform built on the top where our marsh birds, most of the time they're going to be ospreys, have an area to nest. Yep, you see one coming up. This actually got a cormorant sitting on it, but the are you because people call him a loon. He's just sitting up there resting. Oh, he spotted us and is flying away right now. He's going to probably touch down in the water a little bit. Nope, he didn't. He just got real close to the edge. They like to tap their butt in the water. Here's one of those pylons that Oliver was talking about. With that platform on the top and you can see that the nest is a little deteriorated from this season being over. And it just, you know being blown away in the wind since it wasn't being maintained at the moment by any ospreys but this is one of those poles you'll see them scattered all around i can actually see a couple others in that direction um far away you guys probably can't see them spot them right off but i can see them and they are fairly large it may not look that big but the thing is probably at least four four foot across from point to point diagonally Maybe even longer than that, or wider than that, but... So where are you thinking, Oliver? I'm thinking right down through here. There's uh, not any crab pots, commercial guys, in this part of the little river right through here. Okay. And this right here should stay deep enough. I've never seen it dry. All right. Get ready to throw the top one right there on the left. Just throw it right out here. We're going to stay away from the banks, try to stay in the deeper part of the river. We're going we're gonna to bait this uh, pot, this little river, pretty heavy because this is the only open little river that I see that the crabbers are not crabbing that pots in or I don't see any so maybe that's a good little spot for us we'll have to wait and see all right we've come about a good hundred yards from our last one let's do another here stuff tangled a little bit I'm ready whenever you are. I've been kind of going in reverse to move back a little bit further because I'm looking at the distance between here and down there and we're going to go ahead and put this other one in the same area. You think we should go to a different spot? I don't know. I'm just saying. That's up to you. I don't care. Let's go out to venture to another spot. We got that right there baited. Two traps right there, and I mean, we could hit and miss them. You know, it's one of those hit and miss deals, and we definitely don't want to miss too many, right? Here you go, stuff. 
we're gonna find us another home. Yeah, the fact that I don't see any commercial pots is a little bit weary because you know they test out and you know track them down pretty good. So if there's no commercial pots back here, mean may mean there's no crab back here either. So we don't want to miss the crab completely. We do like to eat crab. Yeah, trust me, there's commercial crabbers in this area is just like other areas. They become professionals at keeping track of the crabs and positioning those pots right in those areas when they know that those crabs should be there and I'm sure uh, some of the best of the best keep that little pad you know the one that you write down all the information about maybe the days or the months and keep your track of it like that so you always got something to go back on uh, we keep up with ours by the videos you guys can keep up with crabbing here in South Carolina by coming along with all my videos also all the time hit the subscribe right that's right we're putting in the effort so make sure you give us that like subscribe if you like to come along on adventures with us or if you haven't come on adventures with us before if you want to come on some more adventures with us make sure you hit that like and subscribe button it's free and we occasionally get people that say they're not subscribed just because they don't know how um, if you're watching our video, there's a little button right underneath the side of it that should say subscribe. And um, if it's red, you want to click on it so it turns gray or blue, I think, whichever one on different devices. But you want to click on it so it says subscribed. And so, anytime that you want to hit the like button, just, you know, go down there and see the little thumbs up. Make sure you hold it until it turns dark color. And then that thumbs down button, it's a trick for that when you hit it two times. That way the YouTube creator knows that you really didn't like their video. Totally didn't like it if you hit it twice. <laughs> can be very um, misconstruing because you see actually right there is a patch of oysters already starting to come out and this whole area is like that I can actually see the water rippling right here on two different spots where the oysters are going to be popping out here very shortly the edges are starting already but I can see the little ripple on the water showing up right here in this area and all along that one so it can be very very dangerous to come out in our area at high speeds if you don't know the area if you ever visit our area please be cautious slow down learn the area you see this right here structure under the water it's very easy to be running along and miss that there especially in the rough conditions like you see these uh waves out here because every now and then you may see a little white splash on the area like that but these things are things that are very very dangerous you hit one of them at a big speed and it can actually throw you out in the boat you know you could be like spun around several times and you know right in the water so always be very very cautious of that don't get out here and you know get yourselves hurt nope Hauling butt on the water can definitely get you in trouble. And this is what we're going to do, guys, with this pot right here. I'm thinking the crabs are in the deeper water. And the crab trap that we put over there behind the oyster bank, I know on low tide, that's only going to be two to three foot, which means it's an eight, nine foot. And then these other two back here, they're probably going to be in four foot or five foot on low tide and then 10, 11 
maybe 12 on high tide. This area right here is going to get down to about two foot and it's going to be, you know, in the eight foot range. So we're going to have two set out and some, even though it looks like bigger water and stuff, there's going to be two set out and some shallow water, two set out and some deeper water. The two back there, that, as you can see, they're going to be closer together. We'll throw this one right here on out there. And we're going to throw it right here to the right. traps out all our traps are out guys the test is on we're fishing we're crabbing and we're going to see what we get with you guys when we come right back home with you I'm ready to go check these crab pots. So it's been about 20 hours since we set these pots out. I sure hope we got some big blue crabs. I hope so too, because it's still cold and windy out here. So I hope putting forth all this effort is going to bring us in some crabs. I mean, it's already up to 55 degrees. How warm do you want it to be today, Steph? Uh, about 75 would be good for me. Maybe 85. 85? Yeah, I like those sunny and 75 days. It is sunny today, so that's a plus. If it was 85 degrees out here and you had on that coat and scarf and all that stuff, people would look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> well, if it was 75 or 85 degrees out here today, I wouldn't have to have on all this stuff. I could be wearing shorts and flip-flops, which is my rathers. Putting your toes in the sand. That's right, or in the water at least. So all across the marsh today, all you can see at this time of the tide is golden reeds standing up. The tide is pretty high right now. Yeah, the Spartina grass has died back and it's dying back in our area right now, guys. It's, we're right here on the verge of winter starting up. It's still beautiful to get out here and enjoy today. It is pretty. Check out these little winding creeks. I know them like the back of my head. And when the tide's up like this, you get a good view all around. You can see right across the top of the grass. all around so today we got to make a decision on which crab pots to pull first and I've decided that we're gonna go back over by the golf course there where we put the two crab pots together right there pull those first and then work our way back um, if our bait is still looking good in the traps, my plan is to just dump them, throw them back in, and go for another 24 hours. We'll just have to see what that bait looks like and, you know, see if it's worth moving the crab pots. Uh, it's always worth crabbing. It's just got to uh, know when and where to crab. So that's what we're doing. We're testing the waters with you guys. We're gonna head on over, get on over there, and we'll bring you guys right back home when we get to pulling those crab pots. So we made it to our first crab pot that we're gonna check today with you guys. And 
brought two containers along with us, one to dump our pots in, one to put our keeper crabs in. The trusty gauge that we use five inches from here to here to measure the shell of the blue crabs. It's heavy. Look at Oh, I see a few. Yeah, buddy. Man, lots of crabs. But they may be on the small side of yeah. this area. So we're gonna see how many cubes we got right here probably move this trap if it ain't producing very many tips. The bait still looks okay. Tickle, tickle, tickle. That's a big guy right there. Yeah, it is. That is a big boy right here, guys. Check this carap right here out. Wow. Look at this is five inches. Check it him out. This is one of the biggest crabs that I have caught in this area in four to five years of crabbing. His points are extremely large for a crab yeah. here in our area. This is our personal best blue crab right here. He's gorgeous too. We're going to have to get a definite measure ready. Luckily, we got this gauge right here with us. So I can give you guys a look at how much he's measuring in inches. Yeah, it starts right here at 10. We'll just go from the 10 point right here on this gauge. Give you our best look Ooh. at him. Boy, he almost, he almost got, got me. Let's pull him around a little bit right here. Get a really good close-up look at him. 10 to 17 and a half. Ooh, beautiful. So this is a seven and a half inch big male blue craft here. Beautiful. About from tip to tip. From, tip to tip. From this point all the way yeah, out to this point. Yeah, some guys, I know you guys like to know what the measurement is from the tip to tip of the claw. So we'll start on the 10 again. Out. Come all the way out. This is about 26 and a quarter. So he would be 16 and a quarter tip to tip. Awesome. And some of these, these crabs right here, guys, from what I'm seeing, like, all right, this crab right here, these are keeper crabs, but look at the body size of them. Yeah, that's they're, a little they're just They're just not really big crabs, even though they're keepers. Do we want to keep them? I don't think so. Do you, Steph? Definitely not that little female. I'm thinking we don't really need these crabs. We're out here just having a good time. And these crabs are out here, their body size, even though they're keeper blue crabs here in South Carolina, they're just not what we're looking for. I'm, I'm just going to release some of them today with you guys. We're going to pick out the bigger crabs. So 
Can, is it still okay to come here and catch crabs? Yeah, this is a keeper, see? Look at his deformed point, how it's a little, it's not quite completely straight. So we're gonna be very, very selective today. You see what we're looking for? This is a keeper blue crab. This is also, this is what we're at. And look in here. How many more big crabs do you see? Not many. This is a decent sized crab right here. This one's but pretty decent. This is a female, so it won't make it. So we got the one big keeper that I'm going to keep today. I mean, this is how I'm going to do it. This one right here is a decent crab. I'm going to keep it. And the rest of these. Let go, little fella. Yeah, it's your fault if you don't let go. Okay. Here, like I say, in the next biggest crab I'm seeing would have been right here. This guy right here, he's a decent sized crab, but his claws and stuff, they're not very big. You know, if we were out here crabbing the, for supper, almost everyone that you're seeing in here, this guy's a keeper, keeper down here, there, 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 there but the rest of them, they're small crabs or not keepers. So here we go, we'll let these guys go. Let's get them right here, Let's see if we can get them swimming out of here. Give you guys a look at them. They'll come to life here in a minute. They're holding on to one another. And because the water temperature is really, really cold here in our area right now, these crabs are not as aggressive as they would be in warmer water. So two that we're going to keep out of this first pot. Could this be the reason why the crabbers wasn't in this river? Maybe they already know that this area right here is producing small crabs. That's the, that's the things you think about when you out here trying to catch some crabs and enjoy, right? That's right. thing about this spot right here where we do have these crab pots guys we're, we're kind of lucky that we have them right here because you, as you can see in some of the video when we ride in the bigger river it's windy today back in here we're blocked by the wind yeah it's pretty calm back here look how this water is it's like glass so i'm thinking i'm thinking we may see the same quality of crabs right here because we're only about a hundred yards down the river. I see a big male oh, right yeah, up here. Big one there. And there's another big one down there. Oh a big boy right here. So yeah we got some more keepers. We got at least three big keepers in here. Considering there are other keepers, right? Y'all yep. keep that in mind. For you to keeping up with the count of the crabs today. What we want to know is how many crabs total. You guys keep count of that. We're not going to be able to do it. I know some of you can do it. I've seen it in the comments. Oh yeah. People watch. And they're focused on what's in these pots. Shake, for, shake, shake. And thanks for sharing. You know the comments. Sometimes some of you amaze me how smart you really are. Appreciate the comments. You helped us a lot. Just by 
just my eye, we're gonna pick out the ones that we wanna keep, right? The bigger ones today. So this guy right here, he's definitely a beauty in this guy right here. And he's still got that rusty look on his back and he's really yeah, yellow looking. In comparison with like this crab right here, guys. See how white this crab is on his back? See how yellow this one right here is? This crab hadn't molded in a while. So he's going to be packed with me. Yep, all three of those are big keepers. We're going to keep them, all three of those. And there's one guy right here that's standing out. Nice crab. He's uh, got some long, long points on him. He's not real big body, but look, he's a, definitely a six, six and a half inch crab, six and a quarter, somewhere around in there. Decent crab. Now this is a, definitely some more keepers in here. Like I said, I'm gonna throw the gauge on them real quick just to show you. Keeper crab, that's a keeper. Even this guy right here is a keeper. And the water's so clear, I can see him several feet down. Little small little guy. Tiny ones. Look how close this little crab is to being a keeper. So sometimes when you're buying crab, you know, from the locals, the seller, it's uh, probably very important that you look for those number one male blue crabs be a better quality they're bigger you know less for you you to have to shuck the meat out of for it to add up the next part we're gonna get is right up through that little shallow area where we sit so we're at a total of two four six big keepers this pincher was broken and one claw was completely broken off too of that one and since the bait, like we were saying, is looking pretty decent, we're going to look for a little bit deeper areas now to put these pots in. Or, or maybe we run, run. we're about to pull one that's in that shallow water and then that other one that's in shallow water see what it's looking like in those areas and maybe they can, that can be the spots we need to be crabbing. We can be off. Who knows? Yep, we'll figure it out as we pull these next ones and see what we get. There was a good number of crabs in those pots. They were just small, like you said, those small bodies. coming to this area and doing some crabbing to you know catch some crabs to still eat yeah you can still come here right now along the coast of South Carolina and still catch keeper blue crabs and all you need to do that is that recreational fishing license which allows you to use two pots now or you can use those drop type baskets and things like that or the string method right off of some of the local piers and docks and stuff also. We have some beautiful, beautiful areas down here for people to get out and fish piers and docks. One on the, the Broad River over there in this area, one at the end of Hunting Island, uh, one in Port Royal community area over there the nice bull walk with a and that one i'll give a uh, shout out for the beautiful views you get to see off the four story viewing area it's, it's like a, an observatory it's tower like a, yeah an observatory tower like she said but yeah the views off the top of that is definitely a tourist attraction to see that just to walk up on it. Short walk over to the tower from the parking area, ain't but a quarter of a mile at the most, and you're right there at the tower. Coming up on this other crab pot.
today, right? So it is gorgeous out here. I hope so. One thing I'm concerned about, I don't see any of the commercial guys crabbing this area, and that ain't a good sign, right? They know where the crabs are. But we had to test the water. I said, oh, ooh. I see some big I ones. I see some big crabs in here. Yeah, buddy. Ho, 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 ho. We have figured something out, guys. Shh. Don't tell nobody what I'm about to do right here, guys. A lot of mud, I'm too. Gonna get these crabs on sorted out. Check that last pot with you guys. And these two we got on the front, this shallow straight away here, I can see this is what we've been looking for. Why, why are the big, the crabber, why are the commercial guys way out in the other river? Part of it might be the fact that, like we said, you know, this area does get real shallow, and when those guys come out, they may not want to have to worry about the tide swing as much. They uh, might just, this, this time of year, they just might want to come out whenever this, they get ready. This area is perfectly safe to crab. I've seen these crabbers out here crabbing many a times. It's just that they're not here right now. I've seen the commercial guys right here. We shouldn't be crabbing here. Right? No, Think that's not what that's not what I said. I was saying it was so shallow they don't want to have to worry about whether they come out at low tide or high tide. It's cold right now. They just want to come out in the middle of the day. That could be it. Whenever it's a little bit warmer. That could be the reason. You could be on the something stuff. Because you know this tide is not. I mean, this area right here is not real accessible. At low tide, you have to wait till it's a higher tide to yeah, be able to come through this area. The big crack. You're saying, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I understand what you're saying. They more focused on getting tickle, in here, tickle, getting tickle. out, and pulling their traps and getting back home, right? That's right. But definitely, definitely better crabs here. This is a shallow area, right? That's the one thing that we do know. And I'm about to show you the difference. All the other stuff about spectacle, what they know about the commercial crabbers and what they got going on. I have no idea, really. All I know is we have found some crabs and they're nice. So what do you do when you want to find crabs? You get out and go crab. You do your thing. Let it work out for you. We'll know you next week when this whole little creek's lined up with pots. Yeah. Some of you guys that are watching these videos need to not come here now and just like <laughs> line this thing up where we can't even crab next week now. Because that lens clean stuff. It looks a little hazy. It's tough keeping these camera lenses and stuff clean out here. Yeah, the water splashes up, mud and stuff when we're shaking these pots. No telling. So I'm just backing up, right? Straight back, you know, about where this trap was originally and go reset this guy. And we're going to position those two right there in the front along this same straightaway down through here. I'm kind of happy with the way this pot Yeah, right buddy, here did. that did great. Some big boys, too. Big guy right there. All of them. 
all of them are keepers. Three. Look here. Four, five. That's even a big crab right there. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this guy's big. That guy, he was the smallest in the pot. But just for you that love to, you know, criticize others because we wasn't checking the crabs, check this out. He's the smallest guy. Still He's still five and a half. Might be a so female. we're not keeping crabs that are not legal size, I can guarantee you. You know, when you crab lot, you, you just know it. You just see it in them. You can see their size and tell that that's what you've been looking for. And that's a nice crab there. He's not quite as big bodied as the other crabs, but by him being that rusty color in, he's legal. Keeper size, I'm gonna keep him because that meat, like I said, to that crab molts, that meat, he is packed in that shell. So as we've been coming along with you guys, we've already come up from that crab trap where we just pulled up about getting close to 100 yards. And I know the channel that runs through this area, so we're going to go with these other traps in this channel. And I'm going to try to count. One, two. You reach up there, Steph, real quick, grab your top pot, and just throw it to the left, and that buoy should come right out. Right through here will be good. All right, we'll set that other one straight on down. So we're going to be lined up down through here for these big crabs. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen so far. Seventeen. Seventeen nice big male blue crab keepers, not including, you know, the rest of them that we're putting back. I think this is pretty good crabbing for this time of year right here in South Carolina, right, Steph? If you ever find an area with crabs in it this time of year, you can really get lucky and get some big ones right now. Let's pull on up a little bit further. I know right here we got the marsh grass to our right. And on low tide, this area right here out in the center, there's a oyster rake that comes up. So we're gonna get right in between, between here, right there on your left would be great. Now we're lined up down through here. Guys, we're covering 300 yards now, right? And guess what? In order for you to see us pull these crab pots again in this area, what you're going to need to do is go ahead, get on there, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and come with us on other videos. This is probably going to be on a different video coming back out here pulling these crab pots that we think we're on them. So there's something to look forward to. And, you know, as a YouTuber, we got a commitment to keep coming out, making the videos, and trying our best to do some so sometimes things come up and we can't do that but you know we're trying our best to share content with you guys all over the world so yep make sure you hit that like button that little thumbs up button under the video and subscribe to come along and check these pots again with us on the next time let's ride and go check this fourth pot we hope it's loaded too fingers crossed hard to do with these thick gloves on
But just like we had mentioned, you know, as we were setting these pots out, really this trap right here, this area is not deep at all also it gets down to about two foot here on low tide right so maybe this this trap could be loaded too right fingers crossed so all we can do is hope for the best baby see how we getting all the slack out before we ever get to pulling the trap up Man, that's a huge yeah. crab right there. Some nice see, ones. I see a few oh nice yeah. ones in there. This one may have to just stay right yeah, here. It looks like it did good right there. Because we got enough probably over in that area. And man, look at here. And I'm telling you what, my buddy Phillip's trap is working good. Those crabs just like fell right into the bottom of it. What's the difference? Oh man. Is it because it's his? They think that the crabs think that he's crabbing. <laughs> He always gets the easy stuff. <laughs> He's always dealing with new stuff though. He's what, bought six boats in the last four years. Five pickup trucks. <laughs> I'm still on the same truck. Trying to work out the issues. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake them crabbies. What it is, these shake crabs. Them crabbies. They're probably wanting to get out of this darn lime-colored trap. They're probably in back. Man, check those boys there. Ooh. Get him, Steph. And look how that bait's still holding up. Yeah, it still looks great. Oh, look at that. Look good. And i tell you what. That right there seems to have helped out. Watch it close that trap up close. Look yep. at there, sealed. sealed. There we go. Perfect. And we're about in the same position here, so we're gonna let her rip right here over the side, back in the water she goes. Weight it side down, guys. Always weight it side down. So we're back crabbing. We are back crabbing. And that's gonna be in that next video or video to come soon. Wow, that's a big boy right here. Look at that claw. So how many did you have here, Steph? 17. Whew. I want to get a little look at these guys. Look at here. Look at here, guys. That's what I'm talking about right here. Some nice crabbing right here along the coast of South Carolina right now. 17, let's go on through them, Steph. 18, 19, big boy, big boy right there. Look at that claw on that boy there. Can we get a look? Oh, watch his leg. <laughs> He's got the stuff. <laughs> oh, Lord, my fault, guys. Oh. But I wanted you guys to get a look. Look at the size of his claw. Can you grab him by the claw, Steph, and let him see that? Yeah, look at my, even with this glove on, how big my fingers are. He's two fingers. His claw's as big as two fingers. And I'm assuming that other one must have regenerated because look how much smaller yeah, it right. is compared to that one. Oh, don't let him get you. Nice one. He's got the biggest claw so far. What was the number? God, did you mess up? 19 or 20. I, I, you started talking. Oh, man. We're going to have to go back through them real quick. There's four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't get them. I can't get a good number. I think it's about 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. That's over, this is over a two dozen of nice big male crabs. That's a little smaller crabs. He's a keeper. I will give you a look at him to show you guys the size crabs we're the size crabs that we're keeping compared to what we're let's look, we're let's throwing watch him back. Swim, Cause the water's so clear right now you can see them good. Oh, well, he went under the boat. They're not moving around too much right now. That's okay. This is a little smaller yeah. crab back here on the back side. Yeah. And there's three more keepers to add to that number that we was just on that Stephanie and I have yeah, probably. Yeah, 26 now. What? what? We're not going back through these things. 
checking them again today. I All can right. tell you that now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you're about to click on that subscribe button so you can come back out with here next time with us to pull these four traps that we already have. I think we have positioned them that the next time we come, we should catch more crabs. That is if somebody don't come out here messing with my crab pots. I'll be watching. I'll be looking. I'll be waiting. And I know you guys will too. We'll see you guys. You guys take care. Thank you. Eight, 29. 29. She couldn't stand it. She had to count them right stuff. Yep. You guys take care. Make sure if you're able to get out on the water with somebody that loves doing the things you do, you get out there and you enjoy yourselves. We're so thankful for all of you that have continued to watch our videos and keep clicking on them to come along with us on these crabbing videos and other videos here in Beaufort, South Carolina. You guys take care. Stay safe. Happy holidays to all of you guys out there. And a special thank you to our Patreons and our channel members. We love each and every one of you and we appreciate you guys and the support that you give us and that helps us continue to make these videos, gives us the encouragement to want to make these videos and just helps us share this with all over the world, not just you guys that are supporting. Well, but just it helps the, everybody. And just the knowledge that we've learned from others throughout these videos that do leave us comments we never thought that we would ever get so much information and feedback from others all across the world and it has been a true journey and uh, informational i mean it, it has really taught us a lot about the things that we thought we knew maybe we didn't at one time but we all getting, learn every day we're getting better and better and thanks you guys for leaving us comments you're the ones that carry the channel you're the ones that keep motivating us and pushing us forward 